You're watching Chewing the Cut. <laughs> With Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Dick Pig, I said, um, mon dieu, Ricardo de Cochon, pour moi, s'il vous plaît. And everything was okay after that. Welcome to Chewing the Cut. Lee and Mike. What have you got today for us, Mike? Confusion. Confusion. Is Confusion about only... what you just said. <laughs> it was obvious. No. I didn't want to be called dick pig. I wanted to be called, make it nice. Okay. Ricardo de Cochon, which is dick pig in French. All right, okay. Okay, there we go. Um, I've got a story about how engineering is making food better. Oh, on screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at The Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website. And on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as name wipe their way across the bottom of the screen, we get ready for this week's show, Biz and Lee. Do you like, you, are you, you're a Disney fan, you're a Disney gay, aren't you? Not massively Disney. You like a bit of Ariel, a bit of the Little Mermaid. Oh, one particular song. Just one, the one song. The one song. Well, okay. two songs. Because I like Three to songs. change. I like the whole to change. Soundtrack. I like to change the words to one of the songs. Oh, smutty. Okay. Well, Disney are about to feature their first openly gay teen romance. Oh. In their new film, Strange World, Ooh. which is an animated film, not not a real life film. So okay. they're not real people. They're. I don't know why I need to explain that. <laughs> I don't um, need to explain what animation is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I didn't need to do that. So the film has the voice talents of Dennis Quaid, Lucy Liu, Gabriella Uni Union, and Jabuki Young White. Ooh. Mm. It's get scheduled. Oh, did a bit of I did a bit of, <laughs> did, a bit of did a bit of hip hop then. <laughs> yeah. Um it's What are you doing to that poor Gibbon? <laughs> <laughs> it's scheduled okay. for my teeth back for release in November. Now, this is quite a big thing for Disney because they don't tend to kind of feature a lot of LGBTQIA stuff in their films. Not really. Um, not really. We've got a picture, we've got a poster, picture of the poster of the, the movie itself. It doesn't give a lot away. Um, you know, it, they're in space. It's a family. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the guy that's the, the, the animation production designer mm. has kind of said, I've just seen the first glimpse into Disney's Strange World, it features an openly gay teen romance in a Disney feature, which is like a groundbreaking thing. Yeah. So the scene that they're talking about describes, there's a, there's a son called Ethan, who's, who's played by Young White, the, the actor, um, who's being very shy in front of a boy. Um, and his dad comes in and says, so nice to meet you. My son talks about you all the time and further embarrasses his son, which is, is, is kind of very cute. So there's no kind of like big reveal. It's just the story's just set up that the character's gay right from the very beginning. Okay, that's nice. We've got a picture of the family. Um, here, um, again, yeah, they're, they're, they're animated, they're not real. Um, some, you know, is it wrong to be attracted to Disney characters? It's not wrong. There's some, just... there's some silver daddy action going on there. Mm -hmm. and there's some He's just... the same body shape as the guy from Frozen. I've never watched Frozen. Oh, does that make me a bad gay? No, that's not the reason. There are other reasons. <laughs> Yeah, so there's some silver daddy action and there's some regular daddy action. Um, then Ethan... Daddy action. Daddy that's... action. Just ordinary daddy action. Ordinary daddy action. Ordinary daddy good. action. Just regular daddy action. Not silver daddy. Not polar bear daddy. I know all the terms. Um, <laughs> <there with them. laughs> We've got a picture of Ethan, who is the um, uh, male character. So that's the, this is the guy who's voicing him, the actor. Disney, um, yeah, they've been... <laughs> They've kind of had a bit of a flack over yes. over the past couple of years. However, this sort of like sort of twelve months, they've they've kind of stepped up their. I nearly said stepped up their pussy. Then I watched too much Drag Race. So earlier this year, they refused to remove a scene from Lightyear, same sex kiss from Lightyear, uh -huh. um, which resulted in that film being banned in fourteen countries. They were like, no. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing it anymore, which is great. Um, this has got a long way to come. Um, they say, we at Pixar have personally witnessed beautiful stories full of diverse characters. Come back from Disney, corporate reviews shaved down to crumbs of what they once were. So they're, they're mm. pitching stories, and then the suits go, oh, no, you cut that out, cut that out, cut that out. But this looks like it's going to be um, a goer. Nice. Good, good. Mm. Well, this is probably right up your street, this one. Okay. Netflix is racing you home makeover show. Okay. Okay. So imagine changing rooms, but with dillies 
and slapping machines and crosses and a little bit of BDSM. We've gone from changing rooms to my bedroom. Wow. Well, you wouldn't benefit from it because yours are, you've already got a sex room. So this is called, this TV show is called How to Build a Sex Room, which is now streaming on Netflix. And it enlists the help of interior designer Melanie Rose, okay. who says that she's been creating sensual spaces for about a decade. Now look at the... <laughs> what's funny about sensual space? Sensual spaces. Would you like to come and see my sensual space? <laughs> <laughs> um, look at her, bless her. She looks like your granny. Um, no, she doesn't. Are you going to say yours is dad? Yes, she is. Oh, awkward. Um, <laughs> so if your granny's alive, she might look like that. Um, okay, she looks more like my mother. Okay. Um, so it's an eight-episode season where she transforms 12 spaces for sex-positive and adventurous Denver residents. Oh, that's... Um, yeah, we, yeah. We've, we've, so that's her. Uh -huh. She goes into their houses and goes, tell me what kind of stuff you want. This is, this is um, the kind of set. So this was in a caravan that a she caravan? did. A caravan? A caravan. A mobile home. So, you know, she's nine foot wide bed, sex toy storage, restraints on the wall, cabinet, or, cabinet slash cave. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> for, the, for, those, <laughs> for those things. Now, to be fair, I have watched a couple of these episodes. Mm -hmm. The rooms are actually quite nice. It's not like what you were expecting. Like you were expecting, you know, like all black leather and chains and a little bit grim. It's actually quite nice, and there's quite a, a, a broad spectrum of people. So they've got gay people, uh, lesbian couples. There's um, a trans couple in there, straight couple in there. All have loads of different things that they want to have. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit cringy because, like, she's going, "Oh, should we go shopping for like chains?" And you're like, "Oh." <laughs> So yeah, we've got the B and Q to go. <laughs> off the, well, she gets a lot delivered in boxes, uh -huh. and she has she has a code where she that when they're delivered, they have certain things written on because obviously she can't say I can't say well I want this is my box of dillies, um, strap ons in this one. Um, <laughs> they're like she has to like say like you know crockery, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, she said she what she said is that she hopes that the series will prove that such spaces needn't be dirty and disgusting. Yeah. She wants viewers to see that they can actually be quite beautiful and luxurious. We've got some pictures. Now, that that's quite nice. I'm not a fan. You're not a fan? It looks a bit like someone's having a bit of a... You know, it's got a sex swing in the middle of a beach hut. <laughs> that's what they wanted. Yeah, well, it's like nautical theme kind of idea. I don't like it. Not a fan of the wood panelling. Okay, well, perhaps she'll, perhaps, um, perhaps she'll like the next one then. This was kind of like... Um, a, a, uh, like a boudoir -y type, 1920s... Um, Why have they got a bath in the middle of the bedroom? Well, it's not in the bedroom, it's in the sex room. So it's a room, they designate a room so she can put oh, whatever so she wants. Oh, right, okay. So it's not the room, it's like a bedroom, yeah. that's all. So it's a separate room. Oh, okay. One, one, one couple had theirs in their, in their basement and they had to get to it down some steps. They pulled a, 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 a serial killer, it was. After they'd finished it, it was lovely. Um, so, yeah. Um, so why a bathtub in the sex room? Because people like to have sex in the bath. What's your sex room like? It's just it's a bed and wiped clean surfaces. Oh. Mine looks like the inside of a Cadbury's factory. Chocolate. Not shit. Anyway. Oh, so you still there licking it up, wouldn't you? Oh, this is chocolate. Oh, no, it's not. Anyway, let's move on to another Netflix television world programme. Oh, I like this. You liked Buffy, didn't you? You were a big Buffy fan. The Vampire Slayer? Yeah. I might have watched it on occasion. You've got it on, on DVD, uh, Netflix, all the all the all the things. Yeah, you have, haven't you? I, I might yeah. have a selection of Buffy things to watch if I so require. Shall we go? Well, you might be interested. The hardest thing in the world, Don, is to live in it. Be brave. Live. <gasps> oh. Okay. Netflix have launched a lesbian-themed supernatural team drama, and I'm here for it. Okay. It's called. I had lesbians in Buffy. Excuse what? They had lesbians in Buffy. They did, but this is like proper, full-on lesbians from the beginning. No, no, like... Realising coming of age. Yeah, of, it's oh, like... I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian, and I'm here, and I'm going to suck you in the neck because I'm a vampire lesbian. Got myself out of that one, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so this is this... your teeth. What's <laughs> that claw mark <laughs> over there? That's going to grab himself out of It's called dog. First Kill. Okay. So here's the poster, and basically the scenario is there's, there's a vampire family and they're very kind of rich and well to do these are the vampires that can walk around in the daylight day walkers so they don't have to hide do they sparkle like no they twilight. don't sparkle there's no twilight crapness um, and then there's like the people that kind of fight the vampires like the vampire slayers 
this is this is the couple here in bed. Um, the lady on the left, she is she is a vampire slayer, and the lady on the right, she is a new vampire. Well, she's not a new vampire. What happens is when you're a vampire and you reach a certain age. It's all about kind of sexuality. You've got to do your first kill to kind of come into your full vampire powers. A bit like when you have sex. You come into your full sexual powers. I didn't come into my Did you never come into your I, sexual I powers? No. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, it's, it's ooh, it's sexy. You didn't think about what you said there, did you? I didn't, I wasn't listening. Come into your own sexual power yeah. when you first have sex. I didn't come into my own. No, no, I know, yeah. Um, there's some hot boys in it as well, Mike. Oh, good. Finally. So there, there, so on on the Vampire Slayer team, there's this the, this family have um, some some brothers, and they're really hot. Don't have anything else to say about them. So yeah, if you're into hot daddy vampires, lesbianism, vampirism, get it on. Thanks for that, Lee. I think you're welcome. Cause stick around. As next, it's Mike in the buzz. watching Chewing the Code with Leah and Mike. Now let's go over to Mike and pretend that we give a shit. It's Mike and the Buzz. You like an emoji, don't you? In use. Yeah, but if they disappeared, I wouldn't be upset. What if more appeared? Well, I don't know. Why are you asking me this question? Surprisingly, because it's linked to the first is story. It? Yes, which okay. is news about new emojis coming in wow. September. Wow. It's almost like I try and you know give a bit of a tease mm. into the story every single time. Um, so there's going to be a moose, a moose, a goose. Um, there's going to be um, so like some new hearts, new coloured hearts, some high fives, some skin tone high fives. Okay, what's the goose mean? Um, it's in relation to you see. I have no answer to this one. I see it. I was like, what's the goose mean? Um, goose. It's, the goose. It's because there's a popular game that involves a goose. With the youth. What is it? It's a goose game. Duck, duck, goose? Yes, duck, duck, goose. With crap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on the app store now. <laughs> so, yes, um, there's a pink heart. So, where is a pink heart? It's a different colour pink heart. Oh, semi. Um, there's the Wi Fi logo as an emoji, peas in a pod, and a new unicorn. This is groundbreaking information. You're right, it is. Thanks for trying. No, I mean, why isn't the thing that amusing in there? Why is he you know, like a pair of tits? Where's the pair of tits emoji? Where's the butthole emoji? That's um, open bracket, underscore, star, underscore, close bracket. Oh, yeah, but you want an actual emoji of it. <clears throat> Where's the dripping belt? That is aubergine water, water. Right, OK. So you can you can do it. I forgot it where I was for a moment. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, no. Yeah. So you can do that. Yeah, but yeah. I want a picture of it. I want an actual emoji. You want an emoji of someone going? Yeah. Banging one out. No, well, not there, but just like the end with a drip. The end with a drip. Yeah. Be a variety careful. of different. You don't have to tones. go away and get one drawn up just for you. Please. Just so that. Who you cares can about a peanut pod? Who cares about who? Who cares about a goose? God. Get with the times. Let's have a, let's have a pierced labia. <sighs> so, so the, the grasping for ideas to have as emojis, and you call it with a the... <laughs> pierced labia. I was trying to be inclusive. <laughs> of what piercings or labias? Just all of them. <laughs> all of them. All of the all lady of the places. Yes. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on. Yeah. Because you know, don't want to talk about this sort of thing for too long. Um, do you eat Mexican food? I don't know. I know. I mean, it doesn't have a very um, positive effect on my digestive system. Oh, <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear! What kind of effect does it have, Lee? Oh, I tell you. Oh, if there was a, if there was a loose goose emoji, that would be that's like an asshole with brown <laughs> river coming out of it. it would, that would be yes. Okay. Yeah. It's an extreme sport felching after Mexican food. Um, the age-old issue of burritos. Is there an age-old issue of burritos? Yeah, they they open up as you're eating them. Okay. Well, like, like, like... <laughs> At least I'll tell you the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, 
Oh, when I, really I was really a child, my uncle <laughs> <laughs> he used to sneak into my room. I've had a really bad day, <laughs> really hot in the pan. Now you've chosen me. Um, they, the, they physically... They physically fall apart because they're, they're quite packed with meat. And, meat. And... Do you not have them in... <laughs> Do you not, <laughs> Do you not uh, have them in, in tin foil and then you eat them whole... You put a still they can fall apart in the foil, right? That is until recently when some engineers have come up with a solution and have called it, it's basically tape for your burrito. Edible tape? Edible tape. Oh. Right? And they've called it tasty tape. Okay. Right? Because it'll hold together your burrito or, or the wrap, if you have a sandwich. Or another, or sandwich. any other food item that needs to be held together. Yeah, like a, a wrapped sandwich or. Or, um, um, or um, a jacket potato. No. <laughs> Not necessarily. See, a little bit cheese to eat it there. Um, it's just for Bolivar? burritos, really. No. Yeah. Burritos, for really, wraps, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's wraps and burritos. So, from John Hopkins University in Baltimore, yeah, they've embarked on a mission to create this, this way of keeping a burrito together. Embarked on a mission. Jeez. It was, oh, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Engineer issues. Find the key off the counter or let's send some sticky tape to stick on a burrito. Well, I'll go with a burrito, please. <clears throat> I'm just airing an opinion. Of engineering students. Well, whatever. <laughs> like, let's cure cancer, but we're engineering students. I don't care. Go off and just cure just cancer. Do it. Build a bridge out of it or something. That's... Yeah. So, so they're like, come on. They're, they're, they're... <laughs> so they've, <laughs> they've tasted various combinations, right? Um, and they've got, and they've basically invented this tape, which is also gluten free. Wow. And suitable for vegans. Hallelujah. So everyone can enjoy this tape. Everyone can enjoy tape. Yes. Edible tape. <laughs> Edible tape. Around your meat burrito. Is that a euphemism? No. <laughs> Would you is. like to eat my meat burrito? <laughs> it's what it is. Um, you can have vegan burritos as well. Yeah. Um, they've said that there's a couple of steps to using it. You've got to peel a strip from wax paper first. Okay. Right. Um, and then you need to wet it to activate it. A lot of hard work. And then applying it. It's not a lot of hard work, really. You've got to peel it, wet it, and stick it. You're not enjoying the, the fact that someone's invented it. If you're going to invent something, invent something properly. It, 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 what I want is edible sellotape that literally I can just peel off, stick it on. I don't want to be licking anything. Wait, I'm sorry. I have got footage of you trying to use sellotape, right, where you spend 15 minutes... Trying to use it. Yeah, but then they should invent something where you can find the end straight away. <laughs> what does it taste of? Anything? Um, it's, it's just unflavoured, it says. It's unflavoured yeah. tape, yum. Well, you don't want to, to like, take away from the taste of burrito, do you? No. I can't believe we spent two minutes talking about edible tape. Anyway, what's the next one? Uh, story a week. Can I go out <laughs> when we're ready? <laughs> but yeah, if you want to interact with us, and I don't see why you wouldn't want to, Remember, it's at the Could TV. Now we're going on to our story of the week. Housework. Mm -hmm. Do you do your own housework? I do. You do. What's your favourite housework activity? I don't like any of it, but it's a necessity. I think we should make hoovering more energetic and a bit more fun. Okay, which is what this vicar has done. I see. He has been caught using his Henry Hoover, you know, the powerful sucking tool, um, to basically pleasure himself. This isn't news. The bit that is news is that he was caught and kept going. Oh. Oh, yes. Um, In the middle of a christening. <laughs> so John Jeff, 74, was wearing just a pair of lady stockings oh, and the vacuum's nozzle. The saucy bitch. Right, which he was thrusting into. Oh, thrusting. Thrusting. When he was caught by um, a churchgoer who was attending a talk about Asperger's syndrome. I don't know why that's important. I don't know why that's related. But it's there. Is it, was, it in, was it in the church itself? It was in the church hall. Yeah. No, oh, church hall. He wasn't in the church hall. They were going to the church hall oh. for the talk. Oh, where was he then? He was in the vicarage. Oh, okay. Shafting a hoover. So they had to walk through the vicarage. No, they walked past. Oh, so they saw him through the window. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, he knew he, want, he wanted to be seen. They described how he was standing between two, deck chair, two dark chairs, sorry, um, thrusting into a Henry um, in Northamptonshire. Right. They said even though he saw them, he continued pushing his groin towards Henry. Oh, pushing it. Which, which he they noticed, up, didn't he? Which they noticed was famous for its relentless sucking action. Did yes. he make eye contact with them as they walked past? I, he wanted to be seen. Yeah. 
Um, he told he did it. He told the police he did it because he felt naughty. Don't we all? <laughs> this isn't new. People have been f***ing... <laughs> <laughs> appliances for since a long day, time. Since the dawn of time. Yes. But it's because he, he was doing it in front of people. Okay. They called him Infragrante. 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 In a pair of women's stockings. Yes. Um, so what is actually... Ha he's actually had to sign the sex offenders register. Okay, because it was other people. Other people saw. So. Yeah. The... Not because no, Henry complained. Well, just to say, where does Henry fit into this? Well, nobody's talking about Henry. It's a, a dirty whore. I want to know whether it was a wet and dry Henry. Um, oh. He's also had to sign... He's already had to pay £845 in cost and £200 in compensation to the woman that saw him. Oh. Wowzers. Wow, so, bless yeah. him. Um, did he come? Did he finish? Does he, it, did. Does it, did he did. He did. How did she know that he'd finished? He said he's admitted he's... Oh, he said, oh, yeah, I finished. He's been found guilty of doing it and he's... Oh, all oh, right, OK. Um, his do, you, do, you think that, do you think that Hoover is like f was full of cum? What he's actually said, uh, what his defence lawyer said, um, that is, he was still coming to terms with the loss of his wife at a young age and was in a lot of pain... She was a Dyson. <laughs> or he's a Vax. <laughs> Right, he's in a lot of pain because he was ignoring his health and his diabetes was not medicated. So he stuck his cock inside, <laughs> a, inside a hoover. <laughs> it while all the people were watching. Oh, that happy days. Happy days. Oh. Yeah. But not, well, not happy days because, you know, illegal. I'm assuming he's now no longer part of the church. But that's all from the bus this week. Well, thank you, Mike. I myself have a close personal relationship with the Dustbuster, but we're not talking about that today. Stay with us because coming up we have our game of the week. Watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Tenor Man, and this is one for our favourite power bottom, it's Mike. So off you go, power your bottom into the games area. Touch me. Game of the Week. So this week we're playing Tenor Man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Mike a topic and he's got to name 10 things in 60 seconds that are under that topic um, that are on the list. That's basically it, really. That's all you need to know. Are you ready, Mike? Yes, I'm ready, Lee. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give you the topic and then you've got 60 seconds on Whatever the Whatever happened to the chocolate bar topics? Do you remember those? The topic chocolate bar. I know what you're talking about. I don't know what... Uh... Just because you're going to give me a topic and I went, ooh, I've not had one of oh, okay. those all right, um, fruit with pips, 10, starting now. Is banana on there? No. Good, because that's not true. Um, grapes, um, melon. Yes. Um, tomato. No. It's a fruit, it's got pips in it. Um, strawberries. No. Lemons. Yes. Limes. Yes. Oranges. Yes. Apples. Yes. Passion fruit. Yes. Star fruit. No. Dragon fruit. No. Kiwi fruit. Yes. Um. Me. No. I'm a fruit with pips. Got two left. Um. What are they? No, because his time's not out yet. Okay. Um, don't have pears. Yes. Oh. Oh, time is up. Well done, Mike. Thank you. What the did only this? one that you did not get was watermelon. I said melon. Well, you said melon, which was fine. But watermelon. Watermelon is, a type is of melon. separate. No, it's a t it's the same thing. It's Mike, a... I'm not going to argue with what's written down on the card. Because quite frankly, I'm tired and I want to go home. <laughs> this is autobiography. <laughs> I don't want to go home. Go home. Yeah. Okay. It's like chapter one. I'm very tired and I want to go home at the end. Well, next, you, one. This, this, next one should be right up your alley. Because you know... <laughs> all the, um, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland characters. Starting... Nah! Cheshire Cat. Yes. The Mad Hatter. Yes. Um, the Queen of Hearts. Yes. The Caterpillar. Yes. 
Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Yes and yes. Um, the rabbit. Yes. The hare. Yes. Um, the Mad Hatter. I'm not sure what I said. That. Yes. Um, One the more. Mouse. Oh mouse. my goodness, you've got them all. Hurrah! <laughs> I would loads of time. Oh. Well done, you. Thank you. Next one, Mike. This could, this again could be right up your alley. It's Disney princesses. Me. Starting. No. Aladdin. No. Jasmine. Yes. Um. Snow White. Yes. Sleeping Beauty. Ye- no. Oh, Bambi's mum. No, she wasn't a princess. Elsa. No. And Frozen. No. Oh, okay. Um. Nothing to this. Stroke. Uh, Ursula. No. Princess. For unfortunate souls. I'm a very busy woman. And I haven't got all day. Um Ariel. Yes. Bold. Surf. I've gone to Washington Powder, sorry. Um I think Native American. Pocahontas. Yes. Strokeahontas. Sucahontas. Oh, time is on. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. You could have had Aurora. I don't know what one she is. Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Not a princess, though. She's yeah, she is in the end. In the end, yeah. Um, Meridia. I don't know who she is. Mulan. 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 Pocahontas. Rapunzel. Well, oh, okay. Um, name ten Looney Tunes characters. <laughs> Starting... Nah. Lee Robertson. No. Um, Bugs Bunny. Yes. Elmer Fudd. Yes. Um, Wiley Coyote. No. Oh yes. Okay. Um, which then means um, Roadrunner. Uh, yes. Um, Daffy Duck. Yes. Porky Pig. Yes. Foghorn Leghorn. Yes. Chicken Hawk. No. That's fun. Um, Shaggy. Not Shaggy. What's Shaggy. His What's his name? <laughs> Mutley. No, he's not Looney Tunes character. He's not Looney Tunes. Okay. Um, um, Marvin the Martian. No. He was Looney Tunes. Yeah, but he's not on the list. Though. I've said Alma Fudd already. Time is up. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, oh, is it? No, it's not. See, now I've just wasted time with you telling me time's up and I don't know. I should get extra seconds for that. Uh, uh, so so you got Bugs Bunny, you got Daffy Duck, uh-huh. you got Elmer Fed, Fudge, you could have had Foghorn Leghorn. I said Foghorn Leghorn. Oh, okay. You could have Pocky Pig. I said Pocky Pig. Roadrunner. I said Roadrunner. Speedy Gonzalez. I didn't say Speedy Gonzalez. Sylvester. I didn't say Sylvester. Tweety Pie. I didn't say that. So I missed out three. You missed out a couple, yeah. Three. Three. A couple, you know. Oh, we're going to, we're going to nature. Nature, nature. Nature, ooh. So, ten. That you walk around with your cock out. Ten, for, ten varieties of tree. Starting, uh, Elm. Yes. Silver birch. No. Oak. Yeah. Pine. Yes. Um, chestnut. Yes. Walnut. No. Um, Talking trees? Are we talking trees again? Yes, yeah, reminding me. Um, great pine, just because you didn't let me have watermelon melon before. No. Um, gum tree. No. Willow tree. Well, willow, yes. Okay. So that's five you've got. Um, England, British trees. Family. No. Um, ash. Yes. Sometimes you go there when it's hot and sunny. Dogging tree. Oh. Pine tree. No, right, so you've got ash. Yeah. You've got beech. Cypress. Elm, I think you said. Horse chestnut, oak pine, sycamore, willow. And you. I'm what? You. I'm what? Y-E-W. Y-E-W what? Y- oh, oh, it's in you tree. Yeah. All right, okay. Can you name? I think this must be all of the zodiac signs. 
There's 12 zodiac signs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh, there's nine, 10 eight. answers. It's got 10. Yeah. Okay. From now. Aquiros. Yes. Sagios. Huh? No. Sagittarius. Th- oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you accepted Aquiros for Aquarius. Um, well, Capricorn. Yes. Leo. Yes. Gemini. No. Okay. Yes. <sighs> <sighs> All right, where was I up to? Taurus. No. Cancer. Yes. Are you sure Taurus isn't on there? I'm sure. Cancer. Um, yes, Cancer. I've already said Cancer. Oh. Leo. Ding, ding, ding. Scorpio. Yes. I see I'm out of order now. I can't remember the one between Scorpio. Um, so Aquarius, Sagittarius. Cancer, Capricorn, Pisces. Yes. Oh, I think you might have missed out one. So we've got Aquarius, Cancer, Capricorn, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Pisces, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Virgo. Which one did I miss out? Virgo. Okay. Virgo. This is this is very broad, very broad one. Okay. Um, ten things that people collect, starting from now. Lovers. No. Husbands. No. Wives. No. Used condoms. No. These are all things people collect. Stamps. Yes. Um. Beer mats. No. Ashtrays. No. Coasters. No, it's not the 1970s. <laughs> um. Seashells. Yes. <laughs> um. Bottle tops. No. Old bottles. Coins. Yes. Um. Old, 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 old things. Old things. Foreskins, we've covered that off on the show before. No. Hair, teeth. No. What are you doing? No, no body you... parts. <sighs> you, well, you could have had antiques, autographs, you said coins, comic books, paintings, postcards, you said seashells, stamps and teacups. Stay with us because coming up, we have got the absolute excitement that is science that is now it's that part of the show that i wish and hope and pray for the rapture it's mike and that science that is that science that is your prayers may be answered today, mate. Oh! Today we're talking about pressure. Under pressure. Boo-doo-doo-doo. Yes. Um, so we're going to do two different types of pressure. Two. Okay. One is air one. pressure and one is water pressure. Okay. okay. Um, first thing we're going to do is set up the air pressure one because that's going to take a little while to get going. Ooh. Okay. So you have in front of you two cans. I do. It's not empty. They are. And branding have been removed. Very, very well. You yes. Can hardly but... tell that's cola. Yes. It's it's we're going to call them poke hands. Okay. No, I didn't think that right. Take one of your cans, and what I want you to do is I want you to cut it in half. Cut it in half. Cut it in half. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, talk. it's dangerous, yes. Now you have some kitchen shears there to make life easier for you. Oh, it's cutting them like butter. Okay. Okay, so kitchen shears would be able to make light work of that. They have. Okay. How thin is aluminium? I know. And now you want you want the top with the little thing. Yeah, the sprocket. The ring pull. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to enlarge your hole. Oh. Okay. And we're not going to do that with the aid of poppers. What we're going to do is we're going to just cut triangle out of the top. A triangular. Yeah. Okay. Can I take the little doofer off? You can take the ring pull off if you so desire. It already has kind of like a triangular shape. It does, yes, but we just want to make the hole larger. Okay. Uh, now I've got a very large hole. I do as well. But be careful because it'll be sharp. It is. Okay, now 
on the, the side of the can with the sticky label, mm -hmm. you want to cut a large opening. A large Like opening? in a dome kind of shape. Oh. I like that. Okay. Like that? Yes, like that. And then on the opposite side, you want a little triangle. Oh. Little V. Okay. Now, what this is, is this a heat stand? Is it? It is indeed. So what you're going to do is very carefully place this over the lit candle in front of you. Oh. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is move the candle slightly to the, the opposite, slightly out of the way, so it's not directly in the middle. Okay. Because we're going to have to leave this to one side for a short while. Okay. So what I want you to do is carefully place this over the top of your candle. Like so. Okay. Oh, we got in romance. We are, yeah. Right, now what we're going to do is get another can and just pop that on top of your first can. With with no hole or anything? With no hole or anything, just so the hole's on the top. A line. Uh, okay. A dock. Now, what's going to happen now is that the inside of that Coke can is going to heat up. Okay? Unless you mean you haven't made the hole big enough. And Unless what? Up. So... I've, I've not, not made, made my I've not made my hole big enough. Oh. So I'm just going to use the one I prepared earlier because I know that definitely works. There we go. Okay. There we go. So your hole was big enough. I had to cheat and use one I prepared earlier. Been so, said before. Yeah. We yes. We're just going to leave that now. Oh. Okay. Okay. Because the inside of that can is going to get hot. Okay. And that'll lower the air pressure inside the can. Okay. While that does its thing. You have a, a food bag. I do. And some water. I oh, do, yes. I want you to fill your bag with your water. Daily occurrence. Well, hourly occurrence. Occurrence. Continual stream, I believe the phrase it is. It is, yes. And your Yes. Nothing to be sniffed at. Okay. Just pour the water into the bag? Pour the water into your bag, yeah. It takes you back to the days of the fun fair. Exactly. Then you're going to pop a little fish in. You're not going to put a little, little brown fish. No, no, no brown fish, no. Um, I need you to close your bag up with the zippy things, okay? And make sure it's all closed and it's completely sealed. Oh, no, this is a tricky one with these because they're not always 100%. They're not, so you have to be very careful. Just make sure that they're 100% sealed. I think it is 100% safe. The way to test it is to turn it upside down. Yeah, duh. But then... <laughs> it is airtight. Good. Now turn it the right way up again. Okay. Now, this is the part that the gallery are going to get very scared about because oh. below you is electric. There is electricity. You have yes. got a pen. <gasps> Okay, mm -hmm. and I want you to lift your bag up so it's suspended in air and very gently, in the clear side of the bag, very gently, push your pen into the water, giving a little twist, like that. Okay, do you want to have a go? I'm going to put it over the thing because I don't trust you. Okay. How far? Just All the way in. No, about how far down? Um, so it's in the water, so about halfway below the water okay. line. Because what's happening here, yeah, is the, the pressure of the water is forcing a seal on the pen around the plastic. Because we've gone slowly and not tried to stab it, yeah, it's caused a perfect seal around the outside. Oh, you, you, you're going to make me stab it, aren't you? And then Don't stab it. Yourself. Do not stab it, because it will explode. Ah, right, okay, because you, you... So you need to hold it like... <laughs> It's leaking! Failed! So, the reason why I leave it is because you need to hold it like I'm holding it here. I said I hold it like this. Well, I've broke it, so I can Yeah, because you were holding it like this, it, it wasn't causing a seal. So, yeah. But I need that's, the that's voodoo. That's not voodoo, it's water pressure. Okay? Now we need the water out of that bag. So, you, you, the fact yours leaks works well for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to just remove my water. So now while we've been doing that, that can that we've been heating up, yeah, has been getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay. 
Okay, and because it's been getting hotter and hotter and hotter, the air inside it has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the air molecules have been enlarged. Mm. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to shock those. Now we've said that we're going to talk about two types of pressure. There's a third type of pressure, which is called performance anxiety. Do you know what that is, Lee? That's when your PP can't get hard. Okay. It's actually in, in television world. Um, I think there's a bit of an insight into your world there, Lee, um, where you get so focused in on something you forget to do something quite simple. If you look over your shoulder. Oh, they've changed it. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. They didn't yes. think we knew. We, we saw. saw that. We know what you did. Yes. you downstairs we in the gallery. You, we mm. know what you did. Yes. So, unfortunately, what that does mean is that one of the producers is now going to get euthanized. Hmm. Yes, we'll play a game of Russian roulette after the show. Um, but meanwhile, our cans have been getting hot. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cool the outside of the can down, mm. right, very quickly. And that will cause the can to implode. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I'll go first. Now, I don't have tongs. I just have scissors. I want to grab the can and flip it upside down into the water. Oh. Okay. Oh no, mine's not going to work, so I think you'll just have to do it yourself. Oh no, so how do so, I get hold of it? So using your tongues. Yeah, they don't open very wide. Um, if you if you press the catch at the bottom of your tongues. Oh, they have widened. They have widened, so now you'll be able to grab the can, and in one fluid notion you need to turn it so the open end ends up submerged in the water. This is, this is pressure. This is pressure. Okay, so as quick as you can. Nothing happened, Mike. Oh. Didn't work. Didn't work. Why am I not surprised? Yours didn't work either. It did. It? it started. I just wasn't quite quick enough. But yeah. Yeah, it's still hot, that's why. Let's see if it does it. No, I didn't get it didn't get hot enough in the time. Well at least one of them worked. Well, that's science, that is. That's science, that is. Um, are you blowing out your, your candle? Fire safety. Don't touch it, just blow it out. <sighs> ah, but what have I said about not touching it? It wasn't hot. No, but now what, look what you've... There's wax on the table, but that's, that's good. Why, why is that good? Because you can peel it off. Yeah. Well, it's almost the end of the show this week. Remember to join us on social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And on YouTube and podcast services, just search for Chewing The Could. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. No, don't play with the meat shoes. The end of what?